as we turn away from just defining things and start to apply them, one of the first places that we do so is in the context of trusses. A couple of critical key aspects of trusses that make the analysis techniques somehow appropriate are that, remember that these need to be pin-connected members, that the loads are applied at the joints. And so on the structure that you see here, a joint is defined as where members are intersecting each other and that there are these, and from model terms, there's a, a pin at each and every one of those. And that has a pretty important implication that tells us that we end up with two force members, only one unknown, because by equilibrium, if we know what's going on at one end of the member, we know what's going on in the other. And in particular, when these are straight members, then we have the condition of what we call uniaxial loading, and that means that the members are either in axial tension only, no bending, or axial compression only. And so the free by diagram then of each member will be in being squeezed for compression or in tension will be of course the other way. Hence why if we know the force at one end we know exactly by simple equilibrium what the internal force of the member is at the other. And that leads us to a variety of very important aspects of how to analyze the, this particular structure that we're given the geometry, given the span, member orientations, where they're connected at, and given where the applied loads are located. And this idea that of two force members only means that we can come along and cut away a particular joint, reflecting then each and every member at force along the a line of action that's defined by the straight line between the member ends, and those members will then be either in pure tension or they'll be in pure compression. And in this case, we, we're indicating not the force on the member, but rather the effect of the member force on the body, which is the, of the joint uh, itself. And when we have something like this, now we have, a remember, a concurrent force system and we have two equations of equilibrium available to us, sum of forces in two different directions that are perpendicular to each other, oftentimes taken as the regular uh, Cartesian coordinate system x and y, because that coordinate system oftentimes lines up with the member orientation itself, particularly when you have what we call a parallel core truss as we do here. We also have this idea that we can cut the member not at through a joint, but all the way through the structure, preferably only cutting three members when we do that, exposing those internal forces. And we like that because now we're going to end up with a non-concurrent force system. And so here I'm putting the reaction. Presumably we've already done the global equilibrium to find that reaction. We have no applied force at this joint that, that shows up on the bottom cord nor at the top cord and instead we just have the top cord forced and the diagonal forced and the bottom cord forced where I've shown directions that are consistent with what actually turns out to be the reality in this case of the, uh, of the sense of tension or compression. Top cords and, and trusses do tend to be in compression, bottom cords in tension, and then the diagonal, uh, well, it depends on orientation as well as what the applied loading situation is here. But note that as we look at this section here, right, we looked at method of joints first, but now with method of sections, we have a non-concurrent force system. That means that in addition to uh, potentially looking at sum of forces in the x and sum of forces the y, all equaling zero, that we add then a sum of moments about any particular point being equal to zero. We get three equations. And note, it doesn't have to be these three. They could be three moment equations, three different points. They could be two moment equations, one translational equation. But we usually choose that sum of moments about where forces will intersect. So we get rid of two, so to speak, because their moment arm is zero. We only got, we know the reaction. Now we can calculate what this uh, third one is. Or we can come down here and this other point where they intersect 
and it's so nice to do this um, because you end up with um, usually the, the points that you're doing this about are points that have to do exactly with the geometry of the structure because we have straight members so uh, they're the line of action of the torsos line up with the uh, geometry of the member itself right occasionally you can go off the, the member and find another point or off the structure that is for instance in this case I could take where the diagonal and the reaction intersect some moments about that point and that would give me a relationship between these two chord forces um, and, and so that can sometimes be convenient uh, as well that don't always think about ones that are directly on the uh, free body now one more thing that to review is before we, we look at other applications and that is to do a method of joints about this bottom chord joint that shows up in this method of sections cut and the reason why uh, to do that is because when I look at that free body diagram note that I get this T joint and when you look at its equilibrium then it turns out that of course um, the vertical component of this third force we have two collinear and the third one is not collinear and so it has to have a component that's zero and if it has one component zero the whole thing is going to end up zero and so that leads you toward zero force members and that whole notion that zero force members exist in structures uh, sometimes for stability reasons, sometimes because in that particular load pattern that's being analyzed, uh, they are a zero force, but other uh, load patterns they will not be.